Welcome, 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 welcome to another episode. Welcome to another episode of Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. I am, of course, your man, Captain Will. I'm your man, Captain Will, and you have stumbled upon the best Gamecocks podcast across the land. Across the land. The only podcast that is covering the 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 lady game cop the three time three time three time national champion lady game cocks exclusively you are now rocking with the best and since you are rocking with the best come right with your man captain will we got a good one today y'all we have a good one today Y'all, I am still celebrating. I am still drinking sweet tea. I'm still nibbling on pig feet. I am enjoying life. The Gamecocks are three-time, three-time, three-time national champions. That means we're the best. There's a dynasty going on in South Carolina. I couldn't be more happier. The Gamecocks are living the best life. That's what the Gamecocks are doing. That is what the game. Cox are doing. You saw the people that was there at the Colonial Life Arena. You saw the thousands upon thousands of fans out there at the Colonial Life Arena. You know they're going to do a parade on Sunday. It is Gamecocks time. It is Gamecocks time. Woo! That's how I feel on a Tuesday. That is how I feel. That is how I feel. The Gamecocks are on fire, and we're going to continue to be on fire. But we are talking about undefeated season. Undefeated season, 38-0. Beat all opponents. Everybody came to South Carolina. Everybody that brought their best effort to defeat the South Carolina Gamecocks. Well, I'm sorry. It didn't happen. You can try again next year. But, oh, you can try again next year in 2024, 2025. But we saw what old Raven Hollywood Johnson said. We saw what she said when she came up to the mic. Yo, know, revenge tour is over. Revenge show is over. We ain't having a revenge show. Revenge show is over. We are talking about repeat tour. Repeat tour. Those are the buzzwords for this season. That's what you put on a, a t-shirt. That's what you put on on a baseball cap. That's what you put on on some uh, uh some pants, some leggings, some shorts, some July like game costume. We were talking about a historical season that we just had. Historical season. One of the greatest teams. That ever was put, put together. This team right here. This team right here. And I've been talking about it for months and months and months. That South Carolina, this team right here was the best team that we ever had. This is the best team we ever had. Offensively and defensively, this is the best basketball team that South Carolina Gamecocks ever, ever had. Ever had. And we'll talk about that later in future shows. Comparing, you know, this team to 2022 and, 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 and 17 and 20 and all those are things. But we're talking about right now, repeat tour is on. Repeat tour is on. And unlike last season, where the whole talk was about uh, 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 South Carolina losing this, South Carolina losing that. Oh, we get loads of five starters. Oh, boy, we got five players picked in the W. What's going to happen with the South Carolina game cost? Oh, we got to go to the transport portal. Oh, we didn't get no Haley Van Lip. Oh, boy, what we're going to do? <laughs> oh, and Nisa Morrow didn't even decide to do a visit. So we ain't getting no Anissa tomorrow. How them apples look right about now? Oh, we we got old Tahina Pow Pow. Like, hey, who is who? Who is Tahina Pow Pow? I don't know Tahina Pow Pow. Well, you know who Tahina Pow Pow is right now. You know who Ocean Side is right now. The number three, uh, a uh, two ranked shooter in the country, shooting forty seven percent for three, forty six percent from the field goal. You know Tahina Pow Pow now is. Gamecocks ain't worried about nothing. Gamecocks ain't worried about nothing. And, and unlike last year, we have four starters for coming back. Oh, yeah. We have four of them coming back. Well, we're only losing to Camila Cardoza. We have 11 players who's going to be on the roster this year. I don't know what's going to happen in the transfer portal. So Kim Walker haven't said what she's going to do. I don't know what she's going to do. So right now I'm saying 11 because we got eight players coming back, not counting Kim Walker, and we got three. Highly rated recruits. And I'm saying I'm adding Adele Tack, even though she got a ring. How dope is that? Adele Tack got a ring. What? 
Uh, Dale Tack, six foot six, uh, future great center for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Tore up her, her knee in high school, senior year. And rolled early. That means mean, when you roll early, that means you're short. You're smart. You came in January. Got the surgery. Rehab. Getting better and better. Biggest cheerleader on the, on, 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 on the Gamecock side. Getting better and better. Got a ring. Oh, South Carolina's loaded. Loaded next year. It's a lot of things going on in the transfer portal. Every time I turn on Twitter... I see somebody else going to the transfer portal. There's some good players. There are some really good to, to really good players in the transfer portal. And I get these mentions. I get these DMs. I get these different questions. Like, yeah, well, who you think? How you think such and such going to play uh, will go to the game? You think that person comes to the game? No. No. I don't think that person going to come to the game. Because I'm just looking at the transfer portal. And according to what we have on our team right now, and who's going to be arriving this summer, I don't see nobody who can come in and, 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 and like, first of all, there ain't nobody in transfer portal right now come in and start for the game cost. Let's be clear on that point. Let's be clear with that. And, and, and the now is, is, is about, okay, you're going to come in uh, to the South Carolina if you get an invitation to the boom room room. If you get an invitation to the boom room room, then it's a different story. But if you ain't got an invitation, to get past that velvet rope. Then you can't come to South Carolina. But if there it happens to be a player that, that Don Staley gives to, to, to come to the boom boom room, do they want to compete? Do they want to, to challenge for minutes? Because everything is competition because everybody's great. Oh, because I'm a McDonald's All-American right now, and I start for uh, uh, whatever team. It could be Arkansas. It could be Kentucky. It could be Virginia Tech. It could be any school you want to name. LSU, any of those schools. Well, are you good enough and are you willing to take a step back and learn that team concept and that everybody on this team are McDonald's All-Americans or five-star recruits? That is the question. Are you willing to come in? I know you was the number one player at a certain team, but are you willing to come to South Carolina and be the seventh player? Eighth player, ninth player, tenth player. Are you willing to do that? So, in, in that being said, I, unless some random stuff happened in transfer report, I don't see Carolina doing much of anything. I don't see it. I just don't see it. Recapping this season, historic season. South Carolina obviously finished with a number one net ranking. Obviously, come on now. Number one in AP poll for whatever that matters. Whatever that means. I don't care for the AP poll. Never have, never will. Coaches poll. Don't care for that one either. Only one I care for is net ranking. Net ranking. That's it. That's it. I don't, I don't care for none of the other stuff. Net ranking, you're talking about the wins, the losses, the margin of victory, where the game was played, strength of schedule. All these different things matter to me. AP poll sucks. Don't like it. But in terms of net ranking, South Carolina was number one offensive rating, South Carolina number three in the country. So much talk about the game cocks in terms of their defense, and so much talk uh, about the prowess of a Camilla Cardoza, how great she is defensively, and, and Ashton Watkins and Raven, all this stuff. But South Carolina finished number three in the country in offensive rating at 114.9. Means we score 114.9 points per 100 possession. That's what it means. That's a whole lot of points. This is, this is, that, is what, that was the reason I was not afraid of an Iowa Hawkeye top basketball team. I was never afraid. Read the tape. Read it. Go back and reverse it. Go back and do it. I'm never afraid. Because they don't defend. And you don't defend at a high rate. You're not going to beat no South Carolina. You're not going to beat South Carolina no six players, number one. That's the first thing. But if you don't defend at a high level, you ain't got a chance against South Carolina. You don't. You don't have a chance against South Carolina. Now, now Iowa had a great season. Great season. Good job. But you just was too small. Too small to compete against South Carolina. I'm more surprised we didn't win by 20 points. I, I'm, I'm more surprised about we didn't win by 20 points. Double digits is what I predicted anyway. You know, I'm not surprised. Hmm. But we, at points in that basketball game, scored at will. 
they had nothing in the post to the terrorists. They had no answer for Tessa Johnson. They had no answer for Tina Popeye. They had no answer for Malaysia for a while. They had no answers. None. Think about no hour. I was going out to the pastures. Go hang out. Y'all ain't gonna be back here no time soon. No time soon. You go back to being irrelevant. Sorry for your loss. Thank you for the viewers. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Pace of play. The Gamecocks, 38th in the country. 38th in the country in pace of play. That is the highest pace of play we ever had at South Carolina. Carolina. Any basketball team since they've been tracking those stats. 38. You call it the Raven Johnson factor. You call it the Malaysia Full Wiley factor. But this team ran and ran a lot. I love it. And it's only going to get faster because you got somebody named Maddie McDaniel. You might have heard of her. Maddie McDaniel. Who's going to be arriving this summer? You don't know who she is? Google her first off. And you will know. Yeah, she's arriving too. Pace of play ain't going to change. No. Raven Johnson coming back. My lady's a full while. He'll be back. Pace of play ain't going to change at all. Field goal percentage. South Carolina's fourth in the country at field goal percentage. Across the, across the land, you're about fourth out of 360 basketball teams? No mention. We y'all saw ESPN uh, talking about you know uh, the pregame show, which I love. Those girls did their thing. Those women did their thing. Love the pregame show. Love it. Do it again next year. Keep that same group. Keep this, don't, don't don't change nothing. You got if you have three million people, two point nine million people showing up to watch a pregame show for women's basketball. It's some stat I read like, like five, seven years ago, whatever the case may be, there wasn't getting 2.9 million people watching the game. You got 2.9 watching the pregame show. Uh, 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 basketball is on fire. Basketball is on fire. You're almost on almost 19 million folks. 19 million people watched the championship game. And I know a good portion of those folks were, were was uh, wanting to see Caitlin Clark do her thing, and I, 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 ain't, I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that whatsoever. I'm not mad, not mad, because you come up, you get a ticket, you get a ticket for the picture show to see Caitlin Clark, and then you wind up seeing her all Raven Johnson. Like, damn, who is this Raven Johnson girl? She pretty good. Who this thinking about? Bow, 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 bow. Who that girl? That's a Johnson doing his stuff as a freshman. Who in the hell is this Malaysia fool, Wally? Doing his whoop de doo doo. Oh, yeah. You get a ticket to the picture show and you end up seeing the best team this year. The best team over the last two years. Over the last four years. You're talking about two championships in four years, y'all. Three times, three times, three times. National champion, South Carolina Gamecocks. But you don't hear about offense. Two-point percentage, 18th in the country at 53%. Come on now. Talk about these girls' offense now. Talk about it. Three-point percentage, 40%. 40% from the three. Number three in the country. A team that was that could not shoot, let them tell it. Over the past seven, eight, nine, ten years, whatever the case may be, ended up being a phenomenal shooting basketball team. Is it because Oceanside showed up? Could be. Is it because of tea time with Tessa showed up from Minnesota? Could be. Is it because Raven Johnson improved her three-point shooting from 24% to 35%? Could be. Bree Hall shooting 43%. 30. No, no, she didn't shoot 43. I think she shot 38%. Let me, get, let me be clear. I mean, I, I'm thinking that's what it was. It might be 38%, which is 38%. Is that, that correct? I can't hear it in my ear. 30, maybe 30%. Maybe yeah. Which is very similar to what a Caitlin Clark shot for three-point percentage across the season, 38%. But we, we, we no here no there. No, we, we ain't talking about Kate Clark today. We're not, I'm not gonna do that today. Mm. Nothing about that. Assists per basketball game, 13th in the country. 19 assists per game. 
13th in the country, y'all. <laughs> I'm just giddy. I'm just happy. I'm just overjoyed. Fewest turnovers for basketball game. South Carolina averaged 13 turnovers per game. 27th in the country. We didn't turn up all over a lot. It was a couple games like, oh, what are we doing? But as a whole, as a totality versus 359 other teams, South Carolina finished 27. That which means that there's a whole lot of other teams that was more terrible turning the basketball over than South Carolina. Because because our assist to turnover ratio was 10th in the country. You're talking about 1.42 assists to one turnover. That is, I mean, I mean let's, let's be real. That's Carolina basketball. We're going to take care of the ball. We're going to take care of the ball. Raymond Johnson. Tina Pop out. We're going to take care of the ball. That's what we do. Not enough conversation about our offense, which was nice. Noise. Our offense was great this season. Third in the country, y'all. Third in the country. Now, obviously, our defense was top-notch, the best. The best this season. And one of the best, if not the best, de defense that we've had in South Carolina. We'll dig into that later. But South Carolina finished number one in the country in defense. Obviously, giving up 76.6 points per 100 possessions. And the question going into that Iowa game, the question going into the Iowa game was talking about, um, like, can we slow down Iowa? Can we beat Iowa? Can we slow down, you know, Oregon State? Can we, you know, North Carolina State? Because North Carolina State has supposedly the best two guards in the country and all these things. And, and my, 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 my retort, my, my, my um, get back, as you will, was always we have a number one ranked defense. And if you have a number one ranked defense, that means that our defense is always going to play well. It may not be the the the, the stranglehold like we did against North Carolina with Deja Kelly having nightmares about that defense at Colonial Life Arena when we beat down North Carolina. Not it, That might not happen every time. But you will get a, a, a steady dose of our defense when you're having so many good players on defense. Camila Cardoza, Ashton Watkins, Raven Johnson, uh, Malaysia Full, Wilder, Bree Hall, Tessa Johnson. I could just go on and on about our great defensive players. Chloe Kitts. I can go on and on. So those players, and, 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 and we know, Sinai Fagan, hell, let me just name everybody. Name everybody. Name everybody. Because in order for you to get on the court for at South Carolina, you have to play defense. That's not a prerequisite. And y'all know what a prerequisite is. And I'm saying it like that, prerequisite. That's a new way to, to pronunciate it. This ain't Webster's Dictionary. This is Captain Will's Dictionary. This is the way you say it. And the prerequisite is that you got to play defense to get on the court. That goes back to that, that uh, first North Carolina game when, when, when uh, Lay with the Butt only got three minutes. But now, over the course of the season, Malaysia has been one of the better defenders on our team. If you wanted the better defenders on our basketball team, that means you wanted the better defenders not only in the conference, but you wanted the better defenders in the, in the country. Defense wins championships, y'all. Come on now. That's what we do. Offense gonna, gonna, score, gonna score some, you know, get you uh, a ticket to the picture show. It gets you a ticket to the picture show, but defense gonna win the championships. Or, or like Shanae Gumake said, defense wins games and rebound and win championships. Well, we did all those things very well this season. Like, and then we're gonna do the same thing next season. Same thing. Field goal percentage, you're talking about number one in the country. Number one in the country allowing 32% from the field, South Carolina. At the field goal, field goal percentage. Two, uh, two point percentage, number one in the country, 35%. No matter if we're playing Iowa, UConn, LSU, Tennessee, uh, 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 William and Mary, uh, 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 Francis Marion, uh, Florence Darlington Tech, Midlands Tech, uh, 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 Job Corps, it don't matter. Defense is always going to show up and show out every time. Three-point percentage, 18th in the country, defending the three, 27% percentage allowed at the three. 
So you have a, a team that shoots, you know, uh, 40% from the three, you know, number three in the country. That also defends the three at, at what, 17th in the country, 18th in the country at 27%. That means you playing outstanding on one side and you playing outstanding on another side. How many teams can say that? How many teams out there, out of 359 basketball teams, can say that? That they play great on both ends. That's why South Carolina is a champ. You have some teams that are unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable on one side of the ball. Unbelievable. Iowa, the number one uh, offense in the country. Defensively, they rank 200th. You have some really good basketball teams where defense is optional. South Carolina, three offenses, number one defense, that means that we are the best all-around team. Not an individual team in the land. That's why we three-time, three-time, three-time national champion. I, 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 this is this is uh, season two. This is season two of Game Cost Talk with Captain Williams. You mean I'm going into the second year of having this podcast, and I'm going to promote our team all the time, every time, because our national media does not. That should be still a long story. Talking about this team going 38 and 0, undefeated, champion, South Carolina. You don't forget on Tuesday. No. You don't forget that stuff. We come to continue to talk about it. So, so when you address South Carolina, you address South Carolina three times, three times, three times, national champion. You address the queen herself, Don Staley, as a three-time national champion at the University of South Carolina with more to come. More to come, y'all. Steals. We didn't get a ton of steals this year. I mean, we was ranked 81st in the country. Nine steals per basketball game. Raven Johnson averaged like 2.1 steals per game. You know. Blocks. Come on. One, number one in the country. You got Camila called those Ashton Watkins. Let's go. Let's go. You talking about eight blocks a game. I mentioned that how many players that we got returning. So you're talking about eight players. That would be, I mean, as of today, and again, I don't know what Sakima Walker's going to do, but eight players are returning to South Carolina. And of those eight players, four of those are starters, right? Now, I don't know if who's going to be starting this basketball uh, team in, in, in the fall. I have no idea. So much stuff is going to go on during this summer. Not my, my preference is to run it back. You run it back with the same four starters, and we fill in of them. That's my preference. Don't 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 stir don't stir up the recipe now. The recipe is is on point. The recipe is undefeated, and we want we want to do another. We do this repeat tour. We want to continue to do this thing, right? But the head of the snake is Raven Johnson. Raven Johnson averaged the most minutes. She didn't average thirty eight minutes. She didn't average thirty seven minutes like some uh, teams do. They're top players. No, 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 no. Raven Johnson didn't do that. She didn't do that. Raven Johnson had 28 minutes. Eight, 28 minutes a game. Eight points, five rebounds, five assists, two turnovers. And you do your do your math. That's two and a half assists to turnover ratio. That is great. That is great. Raven Johnson played a great season offensively and defensively. Okay? 28 minutes a game. Shot 44% from the field. Seven attempts. Raven ain't gonna shoot 22, 23 times in a basketball game. So she's never gonna go, go to score 24 points in no game, uh, per game like that. She shoots seven times. Seven times, but it's 44 percent. Now, over the course of the season, she shot about two, two and a half, three pointers a game, 35 percent from three. Pretty good to me. Pretty good. 61% from the free throw line. Though that is the thing that Raven got to work on. Go back to the lab with a pen in the pad and get and get better at shooting free throws. That's what she has to do. She increased her field goal percentage. She increased her three-point percentage. She's one of the better guards in the country in terms of rebounding. One of the better guards in the country in terms of assists. I'm talking about true assists. And assist to turnover ratio is elite. Free throw shooting. This season, her upcoming junior season, I expect to go up. 
you, I'm, I'm expecting Raven Johnson to shoot above 70% from the free throw line next year. I do. Offensively, our offensive rating was 115.7, which is really good. That's good. A defensive rating over the course of the season was 75.9. That's excellent. That's amazing. And, 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 I, and I talk about defensive ratings and, and on an analytic sp uh, space, but, and then you take into account that Raven Johnson is guarding the best perimeter player. So you got to take some, you got to, you got to uh, take some things in context. So you give you guarding the best perimeter player and you still get a defensive rating of 75.9. That is unbelievable. That's unbelievable. Raven is one of the, I ain't got to tell you that. If the world saw it, the 18.9 million people saw that on Sunday, that Raven Johnson is one of the best perimeter defenders in the country, bar none. Bar none. One of the best perimeter defenders in the country. We saw Nika Mule did against uh, Caitlin Clark when, when UConn played it, and then you, you, you talk about Raven Johnson was in turbo mode guarding Clark. Mm, two for 11. Two for 11. Clark did on Raven Johnson seven points. Come on now. Come on. Tina Popow. Tina Popow decided to come back to South Carolina one more time. Do it, run it back one more year, right? One more time. And, and it couldn't be, it couldn't be sweeter. You're talking about Tina Popow averaging 27 minutes a game, 11 points, three rebounds, four assists. Four assists. So between our two girls, our two point guards, Two lead guards. You're talking about Raven with five assists, Tina, Tina with, with, with four assists. Two turnovers. Another good assist-to-turnover ratio. Carolina don't turn the ball over. When they do turn the ball over, we get a ton of assists. Okay? 46% from the field. 46% from the field on nine attempts. Okay? 47% from three on five attempts per basketball game, shooting 85% from three. I mean, from, from the free throw line. That is crazy. She's one of the best. Shooters in the country. I say she's the best shooter in the country. And she's returning to South Carolina. It's only going to get better. Only going to get better, y'all. Her officer rating was 123.9. 123.9. Her defensive rating was 85.1, which is better than her previous years at Oregon. And she's coming back again to South Carolina. You know it's only going to get better. That's why she came to South Carolina. And to get better defensively, to be coached by the best. And along the way, she got a championship. Tina Pow Pow, Tina Lights Out, Tahina Oceanside, Pow Pow is on one, y'all. Oh, yeah. 27 minutes for Pow. 28 minutes for Raven Johnson. Breezy Hall went back to Ohio, got a national championship. And, you know, it wasn't even really talked about. It was, it was just a poor job. Poor job of, of media talking about it. That should have been a story. I'm coming back home. I'm coming back home. I'm claiming what's mine. She got a chip in Ohio. 26 minutes a game, nine points, three rebounds, two assists, 44% from the field on eight attempts. She shot 39% from three on four attempts for basketball game and 70% from the free throw line. Breezy Hall improved so much from a sophomore year to a junior year. And I expect the same production to increase next year in her senior campaign. Uh, offensively, 115.2. Defensively, 85.8. Normally guarding one of the, even the best perimeter defender, I mean, the best perimeter player or the second best perimeter player for the opposing team. She's versatile. She's mobile. That is Breezy Hall. From Ohio, national champion, two-time national champion, Breezy Hall, Ashton Watkins, Ashton Watkins, six foot three from from Columbia. We seen the dunks, we seen athleticism, we seen the rebounds, we seen all these different things. Ashton Watkins played about twenty-one minutes per game, nine point seven rebounds, shot about uh, uh, fifty-five percent from the field, two blocks, two turnovers, fifty-five percent from the field. On seven attempts and 56% from the free throw line. We all know that Ashton Watkins need to improve her free throws. We know that. What you get in Ashton Watkins is the best. And I'm saying this right here. And I'm saying this with, with Camila Cardoza on our team. When she's no longer on our team. Well, she's still on our team until she gets drafted by the W. Is that the way it works? Okay. Well, she'll be drafted by the W on, on, on um, Monday. Top five pick, top four pick. Maybe she'll move up a little bit more. Maybe, maybe number two. 
Maybe them too. She showed a lot this uh this tournament. She showed she's more versatile player. Okay, not just six foot six foot seven. The girl is excellent. But Ashton Watkins had a defensive rating of 68.2. 68.2, which is number one. Number one defensive rating for players that play over 20 minutes. Oh, we have an anchor in the middle or the side. Whatever oh, she playing power for or center, whatever. Uh, Ashton Watkins will play some defense. That's Dennis Rodman right there. That is the, Dennis Rodman right there. Ashton Watkins, our version of Dennis Rodman. The girl had 20 rebounds. Other day. 20 rebounds on, on what was that, Friday? 8 points, 20 rebounds. Two what two or three block shots? That is a that could be a, a daily thing for Watkins. I I expect her minutes to increase because with Camila Cardoza, you know, you know, averaging 25, 26 minutes a game, somebody got to get those minutes. Now we have a Dale Tag, and we'll talk about Dale a little bit later. We have a Joyce Edwards coming in, you know, and we talk about that a, a little later as well. And, and but you, somebody got to get these 25, 26 minutes a game. Sanaya. Ashland, somebody got to get those. And I believe that uh, and, and Ashland Watkins is getting 25 minutes a game, 26 minutes a game. That is, that's, mm, that's, some, that's special right there, y'all. That's special. Chloe. Chloe, Skordashian, Kits, herself, hair flip, lashes, all those things above. Had a great season. 19 minutes a game, 9.6 rebounds. Numbers are very comparison, comparable to one Ashlyn Watkins. Two turnovers, 54% from the field on seven attempts, 69% from the free throw line. Chloe Kitts is a really good basketball player, y'all. Put some respect on this girl. She will go back to the lab. She will go back to the weight room. She will get stronger. She's going to add about 10 pounds this, uh, this offseason of muscle. But 9.6 rebounds, I mean, come on, 19 minutes? That's special. 114.7 offensive rating, 76.5 defensive rating. That means that girl can play some basketball. Six foot two? She can play some basketball. Y'all see that mid-range jumper? That thing is special. That thing is sweet now. She only been on campus for 14, 15 months? What? She's still a freshman plus. That's Chloe. That girl is good, and she's going to be great. I have so much uh, 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 respect, and I have so much uh, uh, fee fervor, whatever the case is. I know she's going to be a really good basketball player. Love me some Chloe. I'm telling you. Malaysia Fulwai. Malaysia Fulwai. Lay with the butter. The Keenan High's finest. Lay, lay. Once you come to the scoring table in Columbia, South Carolina, everybody stands up. Who, who does that? Who does that? The crowd cheers. The seeds part. The band start playing. When Malaysia Fool Wally goes to the scorer's table. The girl is special. She's special. And, oh, my God. I mean, Y'all don't know how many DMs and stuff I get talking about Malaysia Fool Wally. She's going to transfer. She's going to transfer. If you actually, like, listen to her talk, and you know her story. That girl ain't going nowhere for no South Carolina. Nowhere. She ain't leaving no Columbia until she go to the WNBA. She ain't going nowhere. That girl is living her dream. She is living her best life in so many ways. She ain't going nowhere. 18 minutes a game, not even 20 minutes a game. Off the bench, 12 points, three rebounds, two assists, you know, two steals, two turnovers, 44% from the field on 10, on 10 attempts. She shoot the ball more than Raven Johnson. She shoot the ball more than Tina Powell, Powell, Breezy Hall. It is a great space for her to come in with a quote-unquote second team, which we don't have a second team, and be that lead person and get 10 attempts. What if she get 12 attempts, 13 attempts next season? I don't see a... Uh, uh, I, 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 let me change that. I see a scenario that Malaysia Fulwell is our leading scorer next year. Off the bench. All right, she averaged 12 points this season. That that could easily, with a couple more attempts for basketball game, that could easily go to 14, 15 points. She's an excellent free throw shooter. She shot 78% for the field. She shot 34% from three. Those numbers are going to only go up. Her defense is unbelievable, 73.8 defensive rating. Her offense overall, 112.9. You should cut down the turnovers. Yeah, not 18 minutes and two turnovers per game. That's not uh, great. That's average. But that'll change. 
Full Wiley will be hurt in a matter of time. But I I I, I fully expect Malaysia Full Wiley, my Malaysia Full Wiley to lead the team in scoring next season off of the bench. Because off the bench, she gets more free reign to do whatever she wants to do. And I love it. I love it. And then when Powell is gone, when Bree is gone, slide her on up into the starting lineup. But don't mess with this uh, recipe, y'all. Let's keep this thing going. And you saw the birth. You saw the 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 uh, arisen of a of a, a, a Tessa Johnson. And and if y'all been rocking with me, and I know y'all been rocking with me for a long time, Tessa Johnson. This is for the new folks. We've been talking about Tessa Johnson for quite a while. We've been talking about Tessa Johnson since she announced her commitment to South Carolina, the Gatorade Player of the Year in Minnesota, 25th ranked in the class of 2023. You talk about the the McDonald's All American, the five star recruit. Six foot, six foot one, point forward in high school. We knew that Tessa Johnson was on the verge of being hurt, but the world found out, 19 million people that found out that Tessa Johnson is her. Back to back games, leading the game, Cox and scoring. That girl is the truth. She the truth. 18 minutes a, a game, we saw the production go up, up, up. For the season average, seven points, two assists, 45% from the field. On five attempts, that's going to go up. It, it, it has went up throughout this season. Five attempts, 43% from three on two attempts. That's going up. That shot is so pretty and like butter. I'm telling you the truth. 80% from the field. Tessa Johnson finished with an offensive rating of 120.5. 120.5. Highest offensive rating was, was, was Tina Pop, I think it was 126.9, something of that nature. Tessa Johnson is a, a, an elite offensive player. And when given elite uh, minutes, this girl's going to show up and she's going to show out and she's going to show why she's so good. Defensive rating 84.4. Good, solid defender, only going to get better. This is the worst that she will ever be right now. With 120.5 offensive rating, 84.4 defensive rate, this girl is going to be sensational for the South Carolina Gamecocks. Unbelievable. And them is the facts. If you could buy stock in Tessa Johnson, you better buy it right now. You should have bought it six months ago, but buy it right now. Tessa Johnson is going to be a future great. We're going to be talking about Tessa Johnson, one of the one of the better players that has ever put on a South Carolina South Carolina Gamecock jersey. Trust me, Sanaya Fagan. Who is more happier than Sanaya Fagan? Who is more happier than 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 the the growth, the maturity of one Sanaya Fagan? Didn't play much as a freshman. Didn't play much as a sophomore. Started the season. Didn't play much as a junior. But she grew. She didn't complain. She didn't pout. She didn't transfer. She didn't do any of those things. She worked her butt off. And she turned a weakness into a strength. And we talking about defensively. Sanaya Fagan, defensive rating was 79.3 this season. Sanaya Fagan, over the course of the season, showed the world how good of a basketball player she can be and how good of a basketball player she will be. Average 15 minutes a game, seven points, four rebounds, all those things increase. 55% field goal percentage on five attempts, that stuff's going to increase because she's a, a, a very good to elite offensive player. Sonia Fagan, 68% for the free throw line. Sonia Fagan, who I predict going to be our starting center next year. Yeah, I said it. Sanaya Fagan, we got starting center next year. And the thing I like about Sanaya Fagan, she's tough, she's strong, she's offensively talented, she tries so hard on defense, and she's a grown-ass woman down there. She is. She is, and I love it. I love it. You ain't going to punk no Sanaya Fagan. Well, you, ain't gonna, you definitely going to put no Ashton Watkins. We got, we got some. Boy, woo, I love our basketball team. I love our basketball team. So those are the ones that we have. Coming back, and again, I'm not talking about Sakima Walker. I don't know what she's gonna do yet. She's gonna do a COVID year. I don't, I, I don't know. So until I know, for sure, what's going down, I'm not gonna talk about Sakima Walker. But what I will talk about is a Dale Tack. I will talk about a Dale Tack who who who's on the roster. Okay, 26 ranked player in the country in the class of 2024. She was as high. Think about this right here in the class of in, in 2022 2023. She was ranked as high as 12th in the country. Then she had an injury. And it dropped down to 33rd. Okay. Worked her butt off. Came back. 
then uh got injured again then went from uh uh let me say went from 12 got the injury went to 33rd came back strong played risen to 26 got injured again so i don't know how good this girl could be so, uh, Dale Tack could be one of the best uh uh defenders one of the best uh she's six foot six six foot six the sky's the limit for a Dale Tack. As a sophomore, because I ain't gonna talk about a junior, I ain't gonna talk about a senior because she got injured in both both uh campaigns. As a sophomore, she had 14 points, nine rebounds. As a sophomore, okay. Junior season got hurt, senior season got hurt. We need a healthy, healthy Adele attack going forward. And I believe it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen. I think this this season, if she's healthy, she averaged about 10, probably about let's say Adele get about 10, 12 minutes a game. Yeah. That sounds about right. 10, 12 minutes a game. Backing up Fagan and Ashton Watkins. You know, that's solid. That's solid. And that's the trajectory of uh, uh, most of our players as they come up in the system. I say come up in the system because that's how it is. South Carolina is the system. So you got to rise up. Rise up of the system and work your way into those minutes. So we got a Dell Tackers 26 of the country who's already on the roster and already there. Got a ring and you'll see it, the, the, the parades you saw everywhere. It's at Dell Tackers. You got Maddie McDaniel, Tori Meniscus, McDonald's All-American, Bishop well, it was in, in PG County, PG County, Maryland. I think it's Bishop McNamara. Saw her in the Unarmed Elite. I was there when it gave her the first interview. First interview when she announced that she's going to be a game cop. Maddie McDaniel. They say she's 5'9". I'm going to let you know right now. Maddie McDaniel is not no 5'9". Maybe about 5'6". 5'6 and a quarter. Machine no five for nine. But I tell you this right here, though. Manny McDaniel is sensational with the basketball. She can score. She can pass. She can defend. She can rebound. She can do a little bit of everything. She is so quick. She reminds me a little, just a little, little bit, a little bit of a Zaya Cook. 12th ranked in the country. 12th ranked in the country. McDonald's on America, five star recruit. All those cool accolades. What, I think it's back to back player of the year in Maryland. She is special. And then we have Joyce Edwards. Y'all know about Joyce Edwards. Y'all know she country. Y'all know country time, uh, uh, Camden, South Carolina. Y'all know all about Joyce Edwards. Courtney ESPN, number two ranked player in the country. Got so many different awards this season, I can't even name them all. Six foot three. Don't, be, don't believe that girl six foot two. She's six foot three. I still beside her. She's six foot three. I'm about five eleven three quarters. and three quarters. She a good bit taller than me. So she's six foot three. And with the poof, you might be six foot five. Joyce Edwards is special. She had 30 some points, 14 rebounds, five steals, five assists. So just, I don't know, three block shots, a basketball game played at an elite level over the past three, four years. She is special. And she's going to be arriving on campus this summer, ready to ball. To go along with the players that we got coming in who coming in who just won the championship. And Joyce is saying all the right things. She just want she's gonna come in. She, she already knows. She said in an interview, she just she said that you gotta play defense. You you play for Don Staley, you have to play defense. That is the, the uh, a selling point for this basketball team. In order to come to the University of South Carolina, you have to play defense. You gotta hone that skill to get on the court. No matter how great of an offensive player. You are. You have to defend. And the girls know that. Maddie knows that. Adele Tack knows that. Joyce Edwards knows that. They family knows all those things. They got to play defense. Don't and, and and folks, fams, family, game cop, family, uh, lieutenants, all the different things that, that go along with this show. Don't think that these kids are surprised when they arrive on campus and they start playing games that they are surprised that they are not getting 25 minutes a game. 28 minutes a game. All those stuff is talked about in the recruiting process. That stuff is discussed. That stuff is known. There ain't no secret. You have to compete. You know that you are going to a team that has a, 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 a gluttony of talented basketball players. So it's not a surprise. Everybody's good. I love when now that video clip, and I think I talked about this before. I know that video clip clip where um uh Breezy Hall's parents sitting there. Maybe not a video clip. I can't remember. 
But Don is to them that she got a whole lot of dogs. It's South Carolina. We got a lot of dogs. And you want to compete? Come on down and compete with other dogs that we got here. That's 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 the way I like it. They ain't gonna give nothing to nobody. No. That's not the way Carolina basketball is. We just gonna show up and you got a you got a spot, you got 30 minutes. No, you gotta fight. Because everybody wanna get that. That that bite of the apple. Everybody want to get that that championship ring. And then you go to the whole thing, all these awards and all this preseason stuff and all those after season stuff and McDonald's. No, nah, they're not McDonald's on American. All American AP stuff and all these different things. All those awards that was given out to supposedly the best individual players in the country, right? All those awards. With the exception of uh, uh, Camila Cardoza and, and Tahina Papa getting honorable mention. No game counts. All those awards and all those individual players who look at their trophies, shining them up, shining those trophies up, watching the game cocks win the championship, watching the game cocks cut down those nets. And y'all know how I feel about that. Y'all know it irritates me about that stuff. Not girls not getting recognized on an individual basis, which means that it, 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 team accolades is fine. And, 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 the, and the, uh, the voters or whoever, they, you know, making those things out, saying, that, oh, no, Carolina's not good enough. Oh, no, Raven Johnson's not one of the best point guards because she only averaged eight points, five rebounds, five assists in 27 minutes of play. She only shooting seven shots. So we can't say that she's the, the uh, uh, one of the better point guards in the country, even though she's one of the better defensive point guards. We can't talk about that because she's not averaging 20 points. Oh, Tina Papa, we can't say that she, no, one of the best uh, shooting guards in the country because she don't average enough points. She don't get enough points. She only getting, you know, 11, 12 points a game, even though she's shooting 47% from the, from the three-point line, 46% from the field. Dang, she, she can't get those accolades. We can't do it. Oh no, Malaysia for a while. It can't be freshman of the year because she only averaging 18 minutes a game. No, we got to give it to the players who's averaging 35, 37, who averages twice as many minutes. So we can't give that. I don't believe in that. I don't believe in that. Not worth, not it ain't worth the paper that is on. So you disregard or you penalize the team that has a gluttony of great players. And they so great because they don't have to play 35, 36 minutes a game. You saw what happened with, with, uh, with, with, uh, what's the team? What's the team name? Oh, Iowa. Yeah. You saw that three of their players averaged 40 minutes per game. You don't think they would be, they'd be more happier. You saw them bend all over or tie, but they average all those minutes. So they're going to get other accolades, right? You can't play in six players. No, man. You, need to stop rewarding mediocrity team medi- how can i say this media mediocre teams for individual awards if i'm trying to make sense south carolina is the best team in the country but it has been the best team in the country for the whole season obviously and it's not we can't penalize because we're not playing so many minutes but i don't care no more i don't care it don't matter to me no more i just had to get that out of my system i don't care no more because we're not gonna get any recognition anyway so we just gotta keep beating y'all every team just gotta feel it so the repeat tour is on just gotta gotta feel it hopefully this transfer portal will will, will help some teams because i want some competition i want some competition I know UConn going to be good next year. They got a lot of injuries coming back, but UConn's also going to lose a couple of players. Um, Paige Beck is coming back. Asia Flood to be there. Aaliyah Edwards is gone. Nika Mueller is gone. I saw a player or two already transferred out. They got a, a nice recruiting class coming up. They're going to be really good, and they'll be healthy, right? I don't know about LSU. I have no idea what they're going to do. I have no idea. I have no faith that they're going to be a good basketball team. I don't. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. A lot of players are leaving. A lot of players are leaving. And they're not getting great players coming in. Maybe they'll strike gold with the transfer portal. I don't know. That didn't work out too well for them this past season. Don't know. Don't know. But South Carolina will take on all its comers. And this is a, a, a great a testament of what actual team basketball is. This is what it is. And, 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 I, did, and I said this statement on Twitter last night, I believe, that 
our girls, we have so many Gamecock players in the WNBA. So many. Yeah, Kiki, who just signed with, I want to say, the, uh, the Aces for a training camp opportunity. Love Kiki to be on the team. Oh, I might be wrong. No, it might, I think it's Bree. Bree signed with the Aces. Kiki signed with, I cannot remember the team. Cannot remember. It's, it's, it's back. Regardless, Kiki and um, Bree are both on training camp rosters this for, uh, for the upcoming WNBA season. So many players in WNBA that have put on the Gamecock uniform. We need to support those girls. The, the momentum is on. The momentum is continuing to drive up women's sports. We need to support. We need to watch the W. We need to talk about these girls in, 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 in WNBA. We need to talk about it. Just continue to support. We don't stop the, the momentum that we have for college basketball now that the season over. No, we continue on. The draft comes up on Monday. Uh, training camp opens up the week after that, I believe. And then the season starts May 14th. NBA League Pass. NBA League Pass, I believe, is $39.99 for the season. Some of us spend $39.99 on DoorDash at night for dinner. Let's support our Gamecocks this WNBA season. And then, before you know it, we'll be talking about uh, – um, uh, college basketball back here once again. But let's let's get, give our continue our love for these girls. Aaliyah Boston. Give me the Cardoza coming in. Zion Cubs. We've got so many players that's in the W. Let's continue that love. AJ Wilson. Oh, oh, come on. You're talking about the best. The number one player in the country, in the world, plays for the number one team in the world in the Las Vegas Aces. Let's continue to drive that support for our ladies. It ain't going to stop. And I'll be talking about it. I'll be talking about all the Gamecocks in the WNBA. So continue to support the girls, continue to support, support the women. And we are the three-time, three-time, three-time national champions. And we're going to continue to drive to greatness on this repeat tour. Because this includes another episode of Game Cops Talk with Captain Will. I'm your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe to the best podcast covering Game Cock women's basketball across the land. You are now rocking with the best. And since you're rocking with the best, come rock with your man, Captain Will. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. 50% of Americans are deficient in vitamin A, vitamin C, and magnesium. More 50% of the general population is vitamin D deficient, regardless of your age. Regardless of your age, I take a vitamin D pill once a week. Once a week, when vitamin D levels are low and the body isn't able to properly absorb calcium and phosphorus, there's an increased risk of bone pain, bone fractures, muscle pain, and muscle weakness, especially for us, for us older folks. I introduce you to product called Live Good. Live Good will help uh, in, in with your vitamin D, help with the uh, various different uh, vitamins. It will help you become a better you. Check it out down below in the description. Let's all live good.